What's the most uncomfortable situation a nice guy has put you in? A nice guy took my suitcase from me as I was walking down the stairs under the pretext of helping. He wouldn't give it back to me, instead saying he would help take it to my bus. I kept telling him I was fine, he could give it back, I got it from here, but no. Of course he sat me in, holding my suitcase in the aisle as I was forced to take the window seat. He kept telling me he could get me booze, I was underage and didn't give a shat, I just wanted to go home. I even tried getting off a stop, or two, or three, early, but he insisted we take the bus to where he parked his car so he could drive me. I was terrified. Luckily I texted my uncle, who met us at the end of the bus line, Air Force guy, the nice guy couldn't give me my suitcase fast enough. The whole, I'm going to help you even if you never asked for it, or straight up said no thing pisses me off, but the rest of the story got creepy real fast. I think I only realized just how creepy it was a few years back when I was telling it to a friend during the trip, I think my biggest worry was that I was going to miss my flight. Now I realize how bad it could have been. Creepy, you probably just dodged a rape. Or worse. Being expelled. R slash unexpected Hogwarts. I was trying to leave a frat party, and the two guys guarding the closet claimed it was house rule that a girl has to give them her number to get their coats. This was not a place I was familiar with, and it was a narrow hallways tucked out of the way from the rest of the party. They were larger than me, drunk as duck, and kept trying to sweet talk me into staying upstairs with them instead because they're so nice. Since they had been so nice to make sure no one stole our things at the party, we had to pay them back. One guy even said I could just flash him instead. I gave them my number, and when a guy started to text me I only responded with Spiderman memes until he gave up. Literally never saw them again. Bonus, I also received my first ever donk pic from this guy, and my response of my, that's cute, was our last interaction over text. I'm still not sure which of the two young men I was actually talking to. I only responded with Spiderman memes until he gave up. Best thing ever. A risky gambit, it had a good chance of making him more attracted. I am gonna start responding to creepy texts with memes now, thanks for the idea. Last semester of college I had a class with this weird and obviously desperate, but super awkward and negative guy. He acted really fake to boot. He always tried talking to me, but his intentions were super obvious, aka women are not human, they are this elusive thing and I need to catch one of them one day. I ran into the guy at the college shuttle, he said hi to me, and I did respond with a simple hi, I didn't really know him, so I left it at that. He sat behind me, and starts audibly and angrily muttering to himself about how girls don't pay attention to him and that he just tries and tries so hard, yada yada yada. That he's being nice, but they're just witches, etc. It was so uncomfortable and he kept bitching the whole time, I wasn't physically reacting of course. Why won't these ducking witches see how nice I am? This is how incels think. I have had this, it's ducking cray guy walked me home, spent ages at the door trying to say goodbye to him, wishing him a good evening. After a long time of him looking at me expectantly he finally walks away throwing his hands in the air muttering about why he even bothers. I did not ask him to walk me home. Um, he walked you home, and you didn't offer him the traditional blowjob and marriage proposal, so I can see why he was pissed. Some of us are out here marrying every person that has walked us home, and here you are just snubbing them. Probably some radical suffragette to boot. I bet she voted in her local elections, the slut. She probably went inside and prayed to her effigy of feminism for the death of all penis kind. The standard payment for the service he provided is one sex. Second date, a nice guy surprise proposed me in a mall surrounded by too many people. Oh god, too soon, at least wait until the third date. Too late I ran away. Good, that was definitely a bad situation. Also, pulls out ring. Too soon, at least wait until the third reply. Too late, they already ran away. 
My parents were dating for a week when my dad proposed to my mom and they were married for 34 years. Until he went crazy, racked up lots of debt, fired a gun at my mother, and spent about 2 years in jail. Should've waited for 3rd week. I had a friend who, between the ages of 17 and 20 proposed to every girl he dated after about a week or two. I don't know where he got the idea from, but he just legitimately thought that was the done thing. I know this because when I had been with my boyfriend at the time for 2 months. He apparently kept asking him why he hadn't popped the question yet. Two of the girls in question were either pregnant or had just had a baby by someone who'd walked out, so they were delighted at the offer of a daddy for their baby. He told them straight up that he would be prepared to legally adopt the kid and be their father. He must have been engaged 5 or 6 times by the age of 20. Luckily none of them worked out and he ended up meeting a relatively sane girl later on and having his own babies with her. Did you by any chance grow up in a country town in the 18th century? That's about the one scenario under which I could understand your friend's actions. The guy was probably around not only when the dinosaurs were born but when dirt became a thing. He was super nice and calm but no was not an answer for him. Let me walk you to your car. I didn't drive. You shouldn't walk alone. There's some crazy people out there. I'm waiting for a friend. I can walk you to their car. We're actually going to the restaurant there, 5 steps away and no not really to any of this, but I don't do strangers walking me to my car. Especially this guy who insists on it. Come on, I can walk you to your car, and if anyone tries to stop you, I've got a 12 gauge in my truck, I've used it on so many people before. I'm not going out to my car, I'm waiting for a friend. I know how handcuffs are used as well. I don't clear, leave me alone. Don't you want to know? Not really. You use the cuffs on the feet, rope to tie the hands up and then hang people, I've done that once or twice. My friend just went in the restaurant, goodbye. Guy uses other entrance of the restaurant to come in and stand behind me as I'm telling host about the situation. Him and another big dude walk me to my car after oldie leaves. I drove home with 911 typed in the phone. I also didn't drive home immediately because someone followed me. I quickly turned off and drove to a public lit, turned off all lights and sat inside until the car drove past. Then I waited, doors locked for 10 minutes in pitch dark before driving home, intentionally going in circles on the way. Bragging about his handcuff, rope, and shotgun skills that he keeps in his car, Jesus that's a serial killer. Or Dennis Reynolds. I have to have my tools. Hey girl, you know I have a total kill streak of 43, right? You should date me. Oh, doesn't everyone keep their rape kit in the car? That's horrendous. As a reasonably big dude it's easy to forget the threat that women face so regularly. Any danger I face is generally gonna be pretty obvious. The fact that women have to constantly consider exit strategies. Avoid being alone with strange men, or sometimes even men they actually know, or carefully word replies to guys for fear of a sudden freakout is terrifying. The worst part is seeing someone in mid freakout, change their tune when a guy, husband boyfriend family friend, enters the picture. They go from Hulk smash, to well I guess I'll be going in just a few seconds. I was at a party when nice guy shows up. He's an old friend of the host who's known for being nice on paper but a complete asshole misogynistic IRL. I tried to keep my distance from him as I'd had scary run-ins with him before when he was drunk. He noticed my avoidance and would not leave me alone, so when he took off to piss in the bushes. I quickly went inside to the spare bedroom and shut the door behind me so I could have a minute to breathe. Not even 5 minutes later, the door swings wide open. Hey buddy, I was looking for you. He comes in and latches the door shut behind him, stomach sinks, then sits down behind me and starts aggressively rubbing my shoulders. Why are your shoulders so tense, buddy? After a beat, I stand up and say dude, this is super creepy, I'm out. He responds massages are creepy to you? No wonder you're single. I don't know what needs to happen to a person to make them this oblivious to their own duckery. Oblivious people don't lock the door behind them. 
I knew a similarly completely oblivious guy, who would always bitch about how the problem was girls in Philly South Jersey. Where we're from, despite his friends telling him directly how creepy everything he did was. I haven't seen him in years and I'm so thankful. Dude locked the door, he knows what he's doing. Plausible deniability, the eternal refuge of the creepy nice guy. Source, was creepy nice guy for far too long. How do you realize you were that guy? I sort of wish it was a big cathartic moment, it was a few things, I got away from a religious circle that viewed marriage and having babies as the point of everything. Real paternalistic shirt which fueled the women as goals not people, I got laid, which helped separate love and lust in my mind, I wasn't in love with every girl I met, I was just horny. I also got into a short lived relationship with a girl that I was too intimidated by to do any creep moves on, and it helped me to view women as people, what a novel concept. I also started working on me, I got hobbies that took me out of the house and started meeting girls who were into the stuff I was into. This is where I met my wife. Probably the ultimate badge of having made a full recovery was a few months ago at work. Some of the younger women were discussing some low octane creepy stuff dudes had tried to pull on them. I tried to offer some insight, citing my past life as a creep. They laughed at that like, you, no, so, huzzah, 